What's up guys, it's John with Pew Pew Tactical, and look, I know the past few months have really given us no reason to be hopeful about the future in any way, shape, or form. It's just been non-stop insane news headline after headline, but you know what? I think today's gonna be different. I think there's probably some, we can find some good news on, on this here old, uh, Okay, well, yeah, no, no, fuck that, nope, nope, nope. While society continues to swerve off of the rails and every day brings new reminders that parody is completely dead in this waking absurdist nightmare that we call life, it is important to remember that you can always unplug. Now that things have calmed down, a little, relatively, I think it's a good idea to go get some fresh air if you can, especially now that some of the COVID restrictions are starting to be lifted. Now I know I mentioned that the Rony Bunker videos have essentially run their course and that's still true. We've got our first normal content shoot lined up for the end of this month and we've got some pretty cool stuff planned. So again, we'll be back to normal production capacity quite soon. Consider this video one last intermediate step before we get there. Now firearms and the outdoors in general have always felt to me like they go hand in hand and I'm sure that a lot of the viewers of this channel probably also hike or camp or hunt or fish, whatever it may be, you probably have some type of outdoor hobby that maybe you haven't had the chance to really go and do for a while. Simultaneously, one of the ways that I have been maintaining sanity for the duration of lockdown when I'm really bored of pull-ups or other kind of half-assed home gym type stuff has been getting into longer distance bike riding. I'd been planning to get out and do an overnight bikepacking trip with one of my oldest friends that's just an absolute monster when it comes to bike-related endurance and kind of just being a mountaineering hobo in general. Oh, you got a whole bag of beef, dude! And I figured it might be cool to give you guys maybe a quick look at some of the kit I've snagged specifically for that occasion. Our route to the trailhead was essentially about 20 miles of uphill cycling on a single lane mountain highway that the local JDM drift kids love to just go kill themselves on. After months of being mostly sedentary in lockdown, the challenge of forcing yourself to kind of just do a thing that sucks and maybe pushes your limits was really a welcome one. And I always enjoy those situations where maybe your mind is kind of telling you to stop or that you need a break and somehow you're able to kind of summon the willpower to just be like, shut the fuck up brain. Now, anytime I'm out doing any sort of overnight outdoors type stuff, I usually just prefer like a really simple bivy bag type setup, but our mountains are kind of just overrun by bugs this time of year. But it is always nice to get a good rest when you're out in the woods while not having to worry about waking up with a bunch of new buddies in your bag. Now, given that this trip was sort of just thrown together pretty last minute in like the two or three days beforehand, my options for snagging something like a one-man tent were pretty limited, but I did wind up settling on the Nature Hike Cloud Up One. It's a series of words that mean anything, nature hike, as opposed to ur urban hike. But jokes aside, I'm actually pretty reasonably impressed. I feel like I've got a kind of dumb habit where I can't turn off the tactical dork part of my brain that isn't into super bright ass neon colors often found in camping equipment. And I really appreciate that the Cloud One's overall color scheme isn't, you know, glaringly bright or just full of clown colors. Uh, it's a really nice subdued red and gray, which actually blends in pretty well with the local mountains and our lunar dust and incredibly shitty quality granite that's just kind of strewn everywhere. It's actually been years since I've owned a tent setup and this shit's gotten way more high speed than I remember most one-man tents being. Although to be fair I never got super into ultralight backpacking stuff and this is kind of where this tent takes a lot of its design cues from. The package includes a crown cover that's going to give you a little bit of insulation from the earth, the tent itself, obviously, a rainfly, stakes, and tent poles. And it's actually really easy to assemble, it went up in a matter of minutes, and I was really appreciative of that considering I was totally bonked on calories by the time we got to the campground itself, and brain not functioning super hot. <laughs> I'm not gonna spend too much time trying to sell you on it because realistically, it's a tent. But it does the job and it clocks in at just about three pounds, which if you've done any kind of backpacking, bike-based or not, you'll know that saving weight here and there where you can is going to make the overall experience that much more fun. After waking up and seeing that the outside of my tent was actually just completely covered in red ants and spiders and these really annoying little shithead brown biting flies that we have around this time of year, I'd say it's a pretty well-spent $100, especially if you just need a kind of quick fix 
you know, I obviously haven't done any sort of long-term testing on this thing. Hopefully it's going to be pretty durable, but it's also relatively inexpensive. So if not being swarmed by invertebrates sounds like a goal in your life this summer, check out the Nature Hike Cloud Up 1. Up next, I have a handful of Gerber knives that have actually just been chilling on my desk for a bit, but I haven't really had the opportunity to go out and use them and give you any sort of meaningful feedback. So this is the first opportunity I've had, and I went ahead and did just that. Now, if you've been outdoors literally ever in your life, which for some of you I know is not. You're probably aware that a good knife is an absolutely essential item, be it for some light bushwhacking to clear overgrown trails, dice up the ingredients of your hobo stew, cutting paracord around camp, you get the idea. The blade that probably saw the most use while setting up camp and going out on a pretty cool little nighttime waterfall hike was Gerber's serrated version of the strong arm. It's a chunky lad with a full tang, 420 high carbon steel blade, and a super comfy rubberized grip. It's actually pretty similar in form to Gerber's iconic LMF2 knife, if you're at all familiar with that, but it does have a few key differences. At about 10 inches of overall length and 7 ounces or so weight-wise, it's got enough heft to feel like you can really drive it through some of that vegetation that might need to be cleared as you are going through whatever trail you might be on. In our case, we had a lot of uh, overhanging blackberries, which have a lot of thorns, you don't really want to walk through it, so you snip off what you can and create a little path. But it doesn't feel quite as sluggish as something larger like a machete would, and it's actually pretty balanced right towards the blade side of that rubberized grip. Gerber actually includes this pretty cool little versatile sheath that can be set up to be worn a variety of different ways. You've essentially got the base sheath, which can be connected to a bit of nylon webbing to be worn from the hip, adapted for a small of the back carry with an included belt loop adapter, or worn vertically on molly webbing if that is your jam. The sheath itself is is pretty much your standard Kydex fair. It's nothing crazy or really much to write home about outside of the modularity on the back, but we had no issues with retention when we took it out on our 2 a.m. waterfall hike. And that did include a decent amount of scrambling over some pretty wet and slippery rocks, and the knife's still here, which is more than I can say for some of the knives I've owned in the past. It's also worth noting that the strong arm actually defeated one of my Chinese tent stakes uh, while I was sort of using it as a hammer uh, to try and bludgeon that tent stake into our incredibly hard and shitty ground that we've got around here. So, point Gerber, Chinese tent stakes. Up next is Gerber's Principle, and this one is in a really nice flat dark earth finish. The Principle is a bit more of a survival knife than the strong arm, and the hilt and Scandinavian grind style edge lend themselves quite nicely to smaller tasks that demand a bit more of precision, and the Principle was super nice to use for chopping up meat for the dinner that we made, and stripping sections of paracord out to string up our lighting system. It's a handy little fixed blade for sure. One criticism I do have though is that it attempts to utilize the same sort of modular sheath system as the strong arm, and while that works for a knife as large as the strong arm, it just kind of makes the sheath for the principal feel a bit clunky for a knife of this size. It's still capable of being mounted at the small of the back, or to a vertical molly platform, or as a traditional hip hanger, but in all honesty, I think I might replace the stock modular sheath with a more minimal leather option, which would really seal the deal for me personally. While the modularity is a cool selling point if you are going to buy one knife and maybe throw it on a bunch of different types of platforms or use it in different situations, this is probably just going to stay a camp utility knife for me. So snagging a small leather belt pouch where that's where it's going to live for the rest of the time that I own it makes a lot more sense overall. Regardless, it's still a rad little knife overall, and I have no qualms with recommending it if maybe you don't need something the size of the strong arm, but you still really want a nice utilitous camp knife. My dumbass also didn't wear sunscreen on our bike ride, so forgive my lobster claws I got going on here. Lastly, I've been rolling around pretty much everywhere over the past month with the Gerber Highbrow Compact as my EDC knife, and while it took a little bit of getting used to, I've actually come to really enjoy it. First off, this thing is just super pretty, and that metallic sage finish on the exterior looks and feels great. The assisted opening action is super crisp, and the blade deploys with a pretty satisfying thunk via the finger flip mechanism, and it doesn't require the sort of wrist flicking motion that is some 
sometimes common in other folders. I'm actually much more used to liner locking knives, and the pivot lock took a little bit of getting used to, but I actually do enjoy the fact that it doesn't put my fingers anywhere near the path of the blade when I go to close it. Not that that's ever been an issue, but you know. It also features a slide lock safety that does the job adequately, but there is a little bit of play in the mechanism itself when it is flipped off of safety. I wish it was a little bit tighter, but it's nothing game breaking. I'm also planning to Loctite the pocket clip screws down when I get a chance, as it's just secured by two Torx screws, and while they haven't managed to come loose quite yet, I've had plenty of folders discreetly lose one of the two screws securing that clip in place, which obviously makes that clip basically useless. So a little bit of preventative maintenance is going to keep those screws in place, which like I said, because of that two screw design is just something to watch out for. Overall, however, it is a super super solid ass EDC knife that has met or exceeded any expectations that I've had for it over the past month. So if you're in the market for a new folder and are specifically looking for a really smooth assisted opener, for sure check out the Gerber Hybro Compact. Up next, I just wanted to mention that I snagged a pair of these Goal Zero Crush Lights for our camp lighting situation, and I am super happy with them, especially for the price point. I've never really owned camping lights of my own or lights specifically geared towards illumination in a camping setting, but I do distinctly remember the super old school gas lanterns and then the sort of clunky battery powered lanterns that came a little bit after them, and in my opinion, no shit, right? These things outperform both of those and pack down super small. The Crush Light is super simple, and it packs down totally flat thanks to this really cool accordion design. Taking up a basically negligible amount of space in your ruck, they're also rechargeable via either a USB power bank, if that's something that you happen to be carrying around with you for all of your other electronics, but more importantly, they feature these tiny little solar panels, so you've got sustainable renewing illumination as well. The Crush Light has a few different brightness and color settings, including one that emulates candle flicker if you really need that rustic LARPing experience, and they're actually surprisingly bright. Advertised as running on high for about three hours or so, we actually had ours charging all night without any real detectable drop in output. And it's also worth noting that for whatever reason, nighttime bugs like moths that sort of normally become hellbent on bonking into lights and killing themselves mostly seem to avoid the crush light's warmer white light, while immediately swarming are colder white lights used for some of the nighttime filming portions. Your mileage may vary, but it was nice to string our lighting system up and not have to worry about it being a bat signal for every nighttime bug in a three mile radius. And like I said, it's really the price point that sells these for me. They are about $25 a piece. I think you can find the white light only version if you don't need to be setting up any sort of cool club lounge thing in the outdoors like we were, uh, for maybe even a little bit less than that. But I would hazard a guess that you are not going to find something this compact with a renewable energy source uh, with this amount of lumen output, probably for anywhere in that price range. So if that sounds like it is up your alley, check out the Goal Zero Crush Chroma is the colored version. And lastly, this one is going to be pretty quick, but pretty nerdy even for me. It's time to talk about pants because lately I have been pretty obsessed with high-end pantaloon manufacturer Cool. With the amount of angry stinging plants and biting insects and poison oak and so on that we've got up in the local mountains, long pants are pretty clutch, especially if you plan on being out at night. Oh shit, move out of there, oh! However, I absolutely hate being that dork wearing anything remotely tactical looking out in the woods if I'm not doing gun stuff. But I'm also frugal enough that the idea of spending a decent chunk of cash on hiking specific pants that don't work super well for gat activities, gat, gat activities, also seems a little bit silly. And that's where Cool comes in, specifically their line of renegade rock pants. These guys are made out of a stretch DWR type fabric that's abrasion resistant, quick drying, and super breathable. And they're also tailored into a tapered fit that I think looks pretty great. I absolutely hate the billowing and awful looking boot cuts found in the vast majority of both tactical and outdoorsy pants, and these fit pretty easily into normal day-to-day -day wardrobe too. The Renegade Rock Pants have features reminiscent of 
cuts from both Cry and 511, but without the overtly tactical flair of either, including numerous small utility pockets, zippers tucked away throughout to prevent the loss of whatever you've got stuffed in them, drawstring cinches at the ankles, and so on. I really do feel like a total nerd for being this hype on a pair of pants, but they fill a really specific niche for me that I've kind of been looking for for a long time. Stuff that I can use outdoors, stuff that I can use at the range, or stuff that I can wear when I go to the store that doesn't overtly make me look like a mall ninja and actually has some pretty flattering tailoring going on as well. So if any of that interests you, by all means check out the cool Rock Renegade pants or the rest of their line because I imagine it's just as dope. Alright guys, that's going to do it for us today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please go ahead and subscribe as we've got lots more on the way. I appreciate you sticking with us and letting me geek out about yet another one of my dumb hobbies. Once again, my name is John with PPU Tactical, and we will see you next time. It kind of tastes like if there was a chemical solution that you use to like clean the inside of a snow cone machine.